Why is it that law professors never actually tell you how to read and analyse legal cases? They will chuck these legal cases at you and expect you to understand them, to extrapolate the key facts and to find the ratio and the obit of the case, but they never give you a structured process on how you should actually do this. So the purpose of this video is to give you this process, give you this structure, so that you can find the important points and summarize all your cases into just a few short bullet points. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Gareth and I'm a lawyer and law lecturer based in Oxford in the UK. And today I'm going to help explain the anatomy of a legal case and help you to understand where you can find all the important information from within the case itself. And then after that, I'm going to show you the the most crucial part of any legal case, which is the head note, which can very quickly and easily summarise the whole case itself, showing you the facts of the case and what was eventually held. And thirdly, I'm going to show you a process of hunting down the ratio and obiter of any case before finally finishing on the exact points you need to write down in your legal case summaries. You can't expect to know how to read and interpret and analyse a legal case if you don't know the different parts that the case is made up of. I remember my first year of university, I was expected to research a specific case and I had no idea what to expect. I didn't know what a case even looked like, let alone the constituent parts of the case itself. So I'm going to help you work out the anatomy of the case by looking at one specific case as our example. Here we're going to look at the case of Caparo Industries and Dickman from 1990. So let's dive into the law report of that case. If you have access to the full law report, which you should do if you have access to your university law library using a service like Westlaw or LexisNexis, then you should be seeing something that looks a little bit like this. At the top of the page, the two parties to the case can be found. So in this particular case, we can see that the two parties are Caparo Industries and Dickman. But if this was a criminal case, then and one of the parties is going to be the Crown, which means that we'll see one of the parties having the letter R, which stands for Rex if we have a male monarch, or Regina if we have a female monarch like we do at the moment. We can also find loads of other really important pieces of information at the top of the law report. So for example, here we can see, for example, the case in which the court was heard. So here that is the House of Lords. The law report citation, so something like 1992 AC 605. A number of catchwords that refer to the legal areas referenced in the case, so negligence, duty of care, etc. And a list of the judges who were sitting in that particular case. So here we have Lord Bridge, Lord Roskill, Lord Ackner, etc. If we were looking at a case since 2001, we would also see a neutral citation, which is independent of the law report and gives an indication of the court in which the case was heard. For example, we could have something like 2008 UKHL 13, which would be a specific reference to the fact that this case was held in the UK House of Lords. In law reports, the headnotes are going to be your best friend when it comes to quickly digesting and understanding what a legal case is trying to tell you. A headnote is essentially just a short summary written by a law report that gives you a snapshot of what happened in this particular case. So, for example, it will show you the facts of the case, what the legally contentious issues were, and also what was eventually held. So before diving into the bulk of the actual case itself, you can get a very good overview of what happened by just reading this head note. However, there are some things that you need to be careful or aware of. Firstly, you're only going to find a head note in those legal cases that have been reported in the law reports themselves. If you're dealing with an unreported case because it's just not that important or maybe the case happened too recently, then you're going to have to read the case through from start to finish. However, this isn't actually too much of a problem because usually all the important juicy pieces of information like the facts and the legal contentious issues can be found within the first few paragraphs of the case itself. Second, not all headnotes are written to the same high quality standard that you may expect. Some are great, some will tell you literally everything, they'll break down the facts perfectly, they'll tell you all the relevant issues and they'll clearly establish what the judges said. However, you also have some which are just plainly misleading, wrong, and don't really give you the full picture of what happened. So either way, you're going to want to read the case anyway. And so let me show you an example of where this head note was rather misleading. In the case of Young and Bristol Aeroplane from 1944, the head note says that the Court of Appeal must not follow a decision of its own that is inconsistent with the decision of the House of Lords. However, 
the judgment of the case actually says that the Court of Appeal is bound by one of its previous decisions unless that previous decision is inconsistent with a subsequent decision of the House of Lords. This is a subtle difference, but it is also a very legally significant difference. So do make sure you treat the head notes with a bit of caution. Perhaps the most useful aspect of the head note is the facts that it contains, because this allows you to create what I call a fact flowchart. And essentially this involves creating a chronological timeline of all the facts that happened in the particular case. So when you're reading through the judgment and you've forgotten some of the facts, you can very quickly refer back to the fact sheet to see what the contentious issues are and what the relevant facts are with respect to the legal points raised in the particular case. Your job then is to simplify the complexities of the facts and structure them into an ordered list of events. And the reason why this is important is because you're going to really struggle to understand the legal reasoning behind a judgment if you don't understand how the facts relate to the law. Now to give you an example, let's take a look at how I use a fact flowchart for the case of J. A. Pye and Graham from 2003. As you can see, the fact flowchart is very simple and follows the events from start to finish in chronological order. It doesn't need to be that detailed, but just needs to give the key facts that are relevant to the case itself. And now I can quickly refer back to these facts as I read through the judgment of the case if I forget something or if I'm not too sure how the judgment relates to a specific event that happened. When deciding whether or not a particular fact is legally relevant or legally significant in a particular case, my rule of thumb is to ask myself whether or not the omission of that fact from the fact flowchart would have altered the legal judgment in some way. Now, if the fact's omission would have altered the legal judgment, then I know that this is probably a significant and important fact and therefore should be kept within my fact flowchart. However, if its omission wouldn't have changed the outcome, wouldn't have changed the judgment, then it's probably not an important fact, and so I probably should just leave it to one side. Everything we've done so far should have only taken us about 10 minutes, and we're now ready to look at the judgment itself. But to do this properly, you need to ask yourself a very important question. What do I actually want from this case? For instance, do you want the ratio, which is the important legal reasoning behind the decision of the court? Or are you after the obiter, which is everything apart from the main legal reasoning of the court? Or perhaps you're after both things. You really need to decide before you start, what is it that you want? If your main focus is on establishing the ratio of the case, which it likely is if you're studying criminal law or tort law, then your focus can predominantly be on the words of the leading judgment. It can be pretty tricky separating the ratio from the obiter at the best of times, but focusing your attention on the leading judgment, which is the judgment that all the other judges agree with, will help make this process a lot easier. Now, judges won't actually formally point out what the ratio is or where the obiter is. They're terrible at that. And there are also no guidelines helping you to make this process any easier. But the more legal cases you read, the quicker you will become at identifying what the legally significant points are. Once I've read through the leading judgment, I then quite like to summarize the ratio into one or two very simple sentences. Now, not only does this show that I've understood the ratio pretty well because I've condensed it down into a very simple summary of my own words, but it also makes your life a lot easier when it comes to revising the case itself. If you want more than just the ratio of the case, and you're looking for the obiter, then unfortunately you're going to have to read the entirety of the case. And the head note isn't going to help you either because the head note is purely focused on the legally material facts and the ratio. But to help you out a little bit, you're probably most likely going to find decent obiter in the dissenting opinions of the judges, also in the specific parts where the judges ramble on further than what is necessary for the specific outcome of the case in front of them, and also where a judge says that they would have decided the case differently had the facts been different. Either way, regardless of how you actually find the obiter, I would strongly recommend that you condense the obiter from each judge into one simple sentence, which again will make your life a hell of a lot easier when it comes to revising them. Having now got all the relevant information from the case itself, you now want a very nice structured set of notes that you can learn from. Using no more than half a page of A4, you want to write down the level of the court, for example, the House of Lords, the Supreme Court, etc. So you know the authority of the decision, the legally relevant facts, and what was eventually held. So 
you know, the legal reasoning, the interest in dissenting judgments, and the important obiter. Alternatively, if you want to encode these legal cases into your long-term memory, I'd highly recommend you instantly turn these case summaries into flashcards using an app such as Anki. If you want to check out my own method of how I remembered all my legal cases at university, then why not check out my video on how I memorised everything at law school. Law cases aren't as complicated or as confusing as you may have first thought. We have head notes that very quickly help us to understand what happened within a case and what was held in the case. There are also processes that we can use to very quickly identify the obiter and the ratio of the case, and there are also systems that enable us to summarise the cases and to encode those facts within our long-term memory. So I hope you found this video useful, and if you have any questions at all, then don't hesitate to leave a comment below and I will get straight back to you. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.